It can be the best neighborhood or the worst neighborhood. When I was growing up here, it was a predominantly blue-collar, father working, mother staying home neighborhood. It's deteriorated a lot. And the feeling among us is pretty much the same, is that we don't want to let it go. How do we take it back to what it was, make it home again? The potential is here, and it's just getting someone to take the first step to do it, to, you know, to believe that it can change. That's, uh, that's really what it takes. It's a very valuable place. It has a lot of people who have deep roots to Burlington. Um, has a lot of history in it. And it's right next to downtown. It's flat, it's accessible. It has a natural park to the north, you know. It has the lake to the west. It's right there. The old north end of Burlington, Vermont, is a neighborhood with a long history. Generations of people from many cultures built it, and they continue to shape it. Today, this community faces the difficult problem of finding a balance between the traditions which made it strong and new forces which are beginning to change it. The people of the Old North End wonder how their lives will be affected by Burlington's expanding downtown, by its need for more housing, and by a proposed multi-million dollar waterfront development. They're concerned about losing something important, something that makes their neighborhood special. But what makes the Old North End worth caring about? If you ask people from the area, they'll tell you about a neighborhood of small houses. You just look at the streets. Beautiful architecture, little houses with little differences, window structures, cornices, porches, whatever. There is a difference. I just walk up and down streets off North Street. Beautiful little houses. They'll talk about the stores. Yeah, I think that's one really neat thing about the old North End. You know, all the little corner stores, the mom and pop stores. You go in there and you gossip. <laughs> and you come back out and you've got what you needed and you just walk down a block in your home. Most of all, though, they'll tell you about the people. There's a real family atmosphere here. Everybody watches everybody else's house and um, looks after one another. Most of the people that live right here on this street are all relatives. They're staying right, right here in this neighborhood. This is their home, and um, they have a lot of pride in, in where they started, regardless of what goes on around them. I think if the elderly stay in the neighborhood, that helps, because it gives a kind of uh, base, a kind of security kind of belonging. I think that's important. Even names, I think, are important. And when you talk about housing, you say, well, the Pichet used to live here, the Beauregard used to live there, the Olsons live there. That is a sense of roots. That's a sense of heritage, okay? North End was known for that. For more than 150 years, people have worked, played, and worshipped in the old North End. They came from across the seas and from right down the road. My grandparents came here from uh, Port Kent, New York. My father came to Berlin 105 years ago this year. Left his little town uh, near the German border. And my father came down from Henryville, Quebec. I came here in 1914, and the city I was brought up in, it was a free republic of Bremen. My mother and father came over from Kovno, Poland. We were mixed. We were Christian, Jew, Catholic, Orthodox. We were Greek, Irish, Syrian, French, Canadians, Americans. We shared each other's traditions and we respected each other's traditions. The old North End used to be farmland. 
The neighborhood began to develop when the Champlain Glassworks opened on what is now Park Street in 1827. The company provided housing for its workers as well as jobs. Some of these homes are still standing on George Street. Other industries soon followed. By the late 1850s, textile mills in Winooski and the railroad, lumber mills, and manufacturing industries along the waterfront were prospering. Located within walking distance of these two areas, the Old North End was home to factory workers, as well as blacksmiths, carpenters, dressmakers, and shopkeepers. Most of the early residents were New Englanders, but they were soon joined by French Canadian and Irish immigrants. The majority of these immigrants were Catholic, and for several years, they shared a church near Prospect Street. Language and cultural differences divided the congregation, however, and by 1850, the French Canadians had built their own church. By 1860, so many French Canadians had come to Burlington that they made up one-seventh of the city's population, with most of them living in the Old North End. In 1883, they began construction of the present St. Joseph's Church in the center of the French Canadian neighborhood. If you look beyond uh, St. Louis Street, you go on down to Spring Street, La Fountain, Rose, Champlain, all the way down to North Avenue. Uh, it was all French Canadian. As all these people worked, many of them began to save money, and they built their own homes or bought homes in the North End. Uh, sometimes it took a couple of years to build a house, but everybody chipped in and helped. You did the plumbing on my house, and I did the carpentry in your house, and she did the electricity on the house, and then we swap around on houses, so, um, but also there were contractors. If you go down some of the streets, you'll see the identical houses. They might be twisted a little bit, you know, one's got a different porch or a different roof, but basically they're all the same plan, the same houses, and one contractor would build the whole streets of them. Within the large French-Canadian and Irish community were smaller clusters of different ethnic groups. For example, the Germans settled around North Avenue and Crowley Street at the northern edge of the neighborhood. All these Germans who were together felt dreadfully lonely because they were used to having a lot of music, wonderful social life, you know, and parties and and, well, anyway, in 82, he said, let us start a, a club, and it will be called the Goethe Lodge, and the motto will be friendship, love, and humanity. A large number of Jews arrived in the 1870s. They settled in a triangle of streets in the northeastern section of the neighborhood. Since they couldn't ride on the Sabbath, their place of worship was close to their homes. The first synagogue was built on Archibald Street in 1884. Within the next 20 years, two more synagogues were established in the area. Most of the Jews were from Eastern Europe, and they worked as peddlers, junk dealers, and merchants. Let us talk about the poor peddler. He would have lived in the North End. He'd start out early morning and trudge the highways and uh, trying to gather enough money to be able to send a ticket for his wife or for his family. And then came the advent of the junk shop, which was very important for the growth of the Jewish community. And then, of course, you had uh, the more affluent merchant who opened up a little store. Other immigrants, such as Greeks and Italians, also opened small businesses. By 1925, North Street was a thriving center of commercial activity in the neighborhood. Our whole lives were centered in this core. We shopped here, we went to church here, we went to school here. All of the business people owned and lived in the same place as their businesses. Everybody always came to North Street. They had a drugstore on the corner and they had little grocery stores and little different kinds of stores all the way down through them. And the bakery, the bakery used to be here, too. That's what that slice of bread is out there. Do you see it? Did you see that slice of bread right on this building out here? Years and years and years ago, there was a bakery here for a while. Of course, when I was a 
young fella on, on Interval Avenue. North Street was a, a, a real shopping center. Uh, we had a shoe store there. We had a hardware store. We had a, a fruit store. Uh, uh, you had uh, just about everything on North, North Street. And so, so it was a hub. You had two good department stores there, which now is Gaines. Used to be Maisel's, where Mel's Drug Store is. Across the street, you had uh, uh, Bloomberg's, one of the largest shoe stores in New England, was there. Then just below him was Frank's Economy Store, which was a large major department store, really, run by a, a family. Well, and Abe Lakowski ran a, a hardware store. You could have bought anything there. If you had a lock that was 20 years old, you went there and Abe gave you a spring for the, for the lock, you know. It was a, just a fantastic place. Abe passed away, something happened there. Nobody carried it on, they just sold the stuff out. Then all at once, these things started to move off of North Street. That was the decline of a small store like my father's, just as it was the beginning of the decline of Maisel's and Bloomberg's and Frank's and Jelano's Bakery because they couldn't compete anymore. In the 1960s and 70s, North Street and downtown Burlington lost a lot of business to large suburban shopping centers. Owning a car wasn't a luxury anymore, so going a few miles to shop was no longer an inconvenience. The automobile also made living outside the city easier. But in the past decade, people have rediscovered the benefits of living near the city center, and another wave of newcomers is moving into the old North End. Suddenly, there's an influx in this moving society. There's an influx of young people, and with the young people come so many beautiful ideas. This is the new energy. Occasionally, a building right through here we will be bought by a young couple. They will buy this, painstakingly work hard on it, restore it, and uh, that helps. People like ourselves who don't mind putting in a little sweat equity into their properties are the ones who become involved in fixing up the property and being involved in the school systems to try and make it better, being involved in community activities, being more politically aware, perhaps. Um, I don't see that that's ever going to harm the North End. You'll help it get it back to the way that people remember the North End being. It went through a stretch there where it was just either bars or buildings that were just empty. And I think, you know, the middle income you know, is going to help. I think a lot of the young people in this town are going to do more good than just stripping the culture. Maybe they're going to bring in to their own culture. But some residents feel that newcomers can also present new problems. They go to work and come home and have their own private social life and we don't know who they are and they don't know who we are and they don't want to know who we are, it seems at times, you know. I think there's a lot of resistance and a feeling of uh, fear when newcomers come and sometimes that's, that's well-founded because often in a lot of American cities um, a, an area becomes fashionable, it becomes the latest fad and. Uh, people with a lot more money start coming to the area and buying up a lot of the houses and the rents go up and, and people get forced out. It simply happens. We were all newcomers at one time. We all started out the same way. Our families bought what they could afford and they started out to get happen. I don't think that today's generation is doing anything any different. I think that it's a different society and problems are just naturally different and you have to come up with some creative solutions and you have to look at the difference. For the past 20 years, Burlington has been growing rapidly. While the old North End is still a neighborhood of small 19th century houses, right next door is a booming downtown of high-rises, fashionable shops and restaurants and just a few steps away is the waterfront where hotels, condominiums, and a marina are planned. I think people are definitely aware that, that things are happening, that, that, that there's a change in interest. Um, one of the dangers that I see that exists is with the, with the coming waterfront development. Uh, you know, the old North End is very close to the waterfront. 
going to be a very desirable place to be located. You know, very convenient to downtown, convenient to the waterfront. It, it is the central location. The waterfront is going to have a major impact on this entire city. You don't plunk 100, 100 say 20 million. You don't plunk 10 million dollars into a, a spot right around the bend and not have some some effect. I think the majority of it will be positive. It will allow the economic base to improve. That will then in turn improve the, the buildings, the aesthetics, the, the visual uh, elements of the neighborhoods. I don't see that as having a total adverse impact on rents that's going to drive people that are living there out. I'm real concerned about what's going to happen to property values. Um, I've heard attitudes in, by bankers saying that, oh, what we really need to do is level those old houses and build new expensive houses. You know, this, we went to the bank to get a loan to do work on our house, and this woman at the bank was trying to tell us that what Burlington really needed was more $120,000 houses, which really drove me nuts. She said, oh, we really just need to go up into the old North End and move those old people out, level those houses, and start all over. A redeveloped waterfront will affect the old North End's future, but other development pressures from Burlington's expanding downtown are already changing the neighborhood. Many houses near downtown have been converted into offices. I think if they want an office, they should get it with a, in a commercial area, because there's plenty of other spaces than to, to take homes and split them up the way they do into offices. And I think it takes away from the uh, the neighborhood or the, the area, uh, you kind of feel separated. Because I don't think you can stay as close as you could if it were just neighborhood, you know, with just families. Burlington's housing shortage is also changing the area. Single-family homes have been divided into apartments, and new apartments and condominiums fill many backyards. While these backyard developments provide much-needed housing, some residents worry about how they will affect the character of the neighborhood. I think it crept up. People didn't pay attention until now. I mean, it's been going on for five years, and all of a sudden everyone goes, wait a minute, how come you walk by the street, there's five condos behind this house, you go buy two more houses, and the next one has three? And you don't notice until you start looking down the driveway, and you go, wow, where'd those come from? So now people are starting to say, we don't want any more. Make some housing, affordable housing, and let's cut out with the condos in the neighborhoods now. Well, it's either that or go up, and I'd much rather see it in the backyard than going up. Believe me, I think the joy of the sky should be retained. You've got to have more housing. You know, there are more people in the world. The thing that disturbs me the most is that uh, you go into these areas such as uh, Rose Street, La Fountain Street, Sherman Street, you know, and and all of these homes that had these nice big yards, right, have all, all been ate up with these condo units. Well, at some point in time, you have to say, can you occupy all space, excluding the, the space of a postage stamp? Hey, Burlington, they, they might have a need for residential, but you gotta draw a line somewhere. One of the ways a city has of drawing lines to control or encourage development is zoning. The problem that I see is that the wards in the old North End are zoned with a much higher density than any place else in the city. The zoning here is so dense that it allows for these backyard developments that you see going up everywhere. I'm not happy about it. It doesn't create an atmosphere to raise kids. You don't have a, a yard for them to play in. It's just encouraging more. You know, a transient population, uh, absent landlords, uh, that's not what I want to see. It's really a zoning issue. I think when people write these, these little zoning treatises, they rarely look at what the physical manifestation of those numbers are. In theory, they seem fine, but in physical fact, I think they make places that no one wants to be. Zoning sets limits on how much an area can grow. But it's hard to imagine how this can affect the way a place looks. Most of the old North End is zoned R25. That means that 25 residential units are allowed on an acre of land. Murray Street, like most of the neighborhood, today has only 8 to 12 units per acre. If a developer bought some of the houses on this street, 
tore them down, and built an apartment building with nearly twice the number of units, the street could look like this. But if that developer bought more houses and he squeezed in every possible unit the law would allow, he could transform almost the entire street with a single massive building. If this happened block by block, street by street, the old North End, a neighborhood of small houses, could disappear as we know it today. We don't believe that development ought to progress right down our streets. We've babbled like crazy encroaching development into our residential neighborhood. Uh, we believe that uh, a residential neighborhood should exist near a central business core. It should exist, it could exist, it ought to be protected. So we've said growth, yes, but orderly, not changing the environment, and please, with our cooperation, we'll have orderly development. But we won't have it just rammed right down our throats and pushed right through the boards without a contest. I'd like to see it stay a, a family neighborhood rather than a lot of traffic zooming through all the time to come here and there. And if we do get new services, I'd like them to be for the people that live here. What makes up a town is the everyday working people. They're the ones that really support it in the long run. And this is what it needs. And these people that care. It's just really that simple. The pride of North Enders runs deep. This is their neighborhood. Their families built it. Their traditions wove it together. And their children hope to inherit it someday. But the growth of the city around the North End, the expanding downtown, new residents looking for homes, a new face for the waterfront, all of these factors are putting the neighborhood at a crossroads in its development. All cities have to grow, and all things change with time, but change can be tempered and shaped by people. This place is gonna be here long after we're gone. It's gonna stay, it's gonna stand. The feeling among us is pretty much the same, is that we don't wanna let it go. This is home and we wanna stay. We'll fight for what we've got. And that's a prevalent attitude in the old North End. <laughs>